But I went in and searched in YouTube for database design. And you'll notice I'm behind some someone named Adam M. Erickson. Three years ago. Three years yeah, ago. Mine's, year on, you know. Yeah, mine's two years and I have 12,000 views on it. So that's, that's not bad. Let's it's look. Our assignment is to <laughs> make you ahead of yeah, right, yeah. That, that'll be your grade. If you get me, if you get me past... Uh, yeah. There's a little graph that shows this. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Where are the analytics at? Do more stats. There we go. Six likes, zero dislikes, two. 78% male, 21% female. Top geographies, US, UK, India. So 631, or 681 from the US. I don't know, is this over? This is just the last 30 days, though. Let's make it forever. It's got the total next to it down here. I think if you scroll up a no, that, yeah, that's a minute. Um, let's see. Forever. 4,000 from U.S., 1,000 from the U.K., 1,000 from India, Canada, Australia, Saudi Arabia, unknown region. I'm a little worried about them. <laughs> Germany, Sweden, Ireland, Ghana. Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. That's, those are NSA views. Right. <laughs> Zambia. Let's see what country viewed it the least. That viewed it all. No views from the Congo, Bolivia, Eritrea, which, no offense to anyone if you happen to be of that background, but I had no idea it was even a country. One in the Aruba. One in southern Sudan, Estonia, Isle of Man, Suriname. Wow, that's amazing. One in Iran. Welcome to the 21st century. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Pardon me? I said, don't let him fool you. He's got to use that on vacation. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. This is me. Yeah, this is me traveling around the world, getting hit from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> No, actually, if it was that, they would all come from our couch, you know, if, if that was the case. All right, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to continue to expand on that um, by showing the results for the poll. Now, in order to show the results for the poll, we're going to have to, like, we're not ready to vote yet in the poll. We don't have the code to, like, actually place a vote. So we're going to have to sort of fake it by putting in a dummy user uh, or a couple dummy users so we can vote more than once. I'm um, going to have to put in a, um, what, a, uh, uh, some dummy votes and some possible answers and so on. So we're going to have to go and add some tables and some data. And we, we've gone over the design of this, but as I create these tables, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask them. So let me download where we had left off last time. I have fallen way behind on grading. I was out of town for a wedding this weekend, and I had to take my brother to the train station four in the morning yesterday. So that I literally, I was in class or I was sleeping all day yesterday, <laughs> except for like about three hours after my last class, I was awake and had like the first thing to eat all day, I think, other than just munching on a few things. And then I went, you know, that's like, yep, time for bed. So. Uh, you know, so since last Thursday or so, it's been a little chaotic for me. <laughs> and, and I always feel good that, you know, I'm fairly flexible about late assignments. So it isn't a case where, like, you folks are like, well, I've had things happen in my life, and I still have to get my assignments in on time. So I cut you slack, and then I hope you cut me slack. So it's, it's, it's even. 
towards the end of the semester, I will be posting my password. So if any of you want to help me grade, <laughs> you'll be able to. Now, you're allowed to grade your own stuff, but you also have to grade other people's stuff, too. You can't just grade your stuff. All right? That, that's the rule. I see an opportunity. Yeah, right, right. You're going to judge this It reminds me, though, of what I heard, that, that there's a company that... There's a company that paid testers for each bug they found and then paid programmers for bugs that they fixed. So what happened after about like a week of that, do you suppose? <laughs> <laughs> programmers were intentionally making mistakes, tipping off their friends and testing. Testing would detect the bugs and they would go and fix them. So you got to be careful what you measure in, in the world of business. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so I'm opening that up. And to show where we were last time and just refresh our memory and see if we have any questions. I'm going to put this. seem as alert as I normally am. It really, I mean, that really, that interruption of sleep really took a lot on me. Plus with driving like two and a half hours to Defiance, wherever that is. Sounds scary. That's like in Indiana, close to Indiana. Somewhere in the side All right, so we have this where you can pick a poll, and you can click on this and see the results. Right now, we're not seeing the results. We're just seeing that. So we're going to do this in two steps. Well first, well, first we're going to review what we have. Then we're going to do it in two steps. The two steps being, first we're going to show the list of possible answers. Then we're going to show the list of votes. All right? Now, we have two pages again. The change we made to this page, the most recent change that we made to this page, is we changed it so that this link, or we added a link to this page, and we're passing on the query string the ID. All right. Remember, the query string is one way that we can pass data from one page to another. And in this case, we need to do it. Because if you can imagine there being more than one question, which question do we want to see the results for? You know? In all cases, we're calling the same page. Let's view source of this. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to view source of these pages, because that shows you what the server-side code actually did and actually produced. So in this case, notice that the link for all of them is results.aspx, but we're passing on the query string an ID, and that ID corresponds to the primary key of the question that, that we're interested in. All right. Once we're here then, once we're on the results page, we use that query string element to pull up that again, and we'll use it to pull up the possible answers and so on. So let's look at the code on the default page. Under edit columns, if we look at our link, our link has a text of results. It has a data navigate URL format string of results.aspx question mark ID equals. That's the part of it that's hard coded. In other words, that's going to be the same for every poll that we have on this poll. The curly bracket zero is a parameter that's going to get filled in. And where does it get filled in from? 
it gets filled in from the poll ID. So that's what this means. Remember, when we number things, typically a list in, in, in programming, the first entry is entry 0, and then entry 1, and 2, and 3, and so on. So that's why that says braces, 0, braces. Yes? I'm just asking because I can't see. Um, it says results.aspx. Is there a dot before the question mark? Or no, no result.aspx, that's the name okay. of the page. A question mark is what starts the query string on a URL. So it's the page name, question mark, and everything after that is the, the query string, which is data that we're passing from this page to, this, to the second page. And what are we passing? Well, we're passing an ID. So we have ID equals, and then we have braces, zero braces. And the braces, zero corresponds to the first element on this list, which is the poll ID. So we're taking the poll ID for each row, and we're including it as part of the URL. And that's what we see right here. If we look at the URL for each of these, and you can see on the bottom, that says results.aspx ID equals 1, because that has an ID of 1. This one has ID of 3. This one has ID of 2. All right. That's why I'm almost always going to include the primary key if I do any sort of query. Because I'm going to need that if I want to pass it somewhere else. Remember, the primary key is what uniquely identifies something. So typically, I'm going to be passing that a lot of times to go from like a page like this where I have a list of things to a second page that shows me more detail about the thing. Other questions about this. Then when we click on the results, this page plucks the ID from the query string and uses it to retrieve this snippet of information. And if we look here, on that second page, If we look at our data source, we'll notice we have our statement that says select star from poll where uh, poll and slash cat, comma category where poll ID equals question mark. That's a parameter. Where are we getting the parameter from? It's on the query string. All right, so query string is on the query string. And what is the name of the field that we're pulling off of it? ID. All right. It has to match what we called it when we created the link. So if you remember when we created the link, I said the URL was results ASP ID equals. So I called the ID, I gave a name to the ID of ID. When I then use it in this data source, I just have to make sure I use the same name on the query string. So if I called it Fred when I made the link, I'd call it Fred here. All right. So there's nothing magical about the word ID. And notice also that in the database, this is actually called poll ID. But I just called it ID on the query string. It doesn't have to match the database field name. You can make it that way if it's clear to you. But in this case, you know, I, I just passed it as ID. All right, questions about this. Okay, let's go then and let's add to our database the list of possible answers. So I'm going to create a possible answer table. And I'm going to make this have a primary key of poll ID. 
and this is sequence number. I'm going to make these two things a primary key. How do you make two things a primary key? You highlight these and you click that. And then I'm going to have um, the, the, the answer text. Alright. So let's go and save this. I'm then going to go immediately, and I'm going to do this before I add any data, right? And I'm going to set the foreign key constraint because I want to make sure that as soon as I enter, enter data in, I'm paying attention to the constraints. So I go and do that. All right. So let's look at a poll. Now you might say, and I get students that say this all the time, that this part's confusing because you have to remember what the, what the poll ID is and put it in. That's true the way that we're entering data here. We're eventually going to write a user interface that is simple and straightforward for people to use. We're right now just looking at the raw database structure. So this is not how we are going to expect our users to, to work with this. But since we're sort of going through the back door, and just forcing data in, we have to remember the IDs and all that. So, eh, not that big a deal. So let's go in and let's put a poll ID of three, i.e. Chrome or Firefox. All right. So I can put in here, for a poll ID of three, answer one could be Firefox. Answer two could be IE. Oops. Could be Chrome. Three. Other. All right. Let's go in and add some more. Let's add four. Android, iOS, or other. That's poll number one. So put in poll number one. Question or answer one. Android. If you set up a form to, to fill in the um, data, would it change anything in the ASPX form or anything? Repeat that, please. If you used a form to put it in there to make it easier for yourself, would it would it change anything in the ASPX? No. Okay, so we have some we have some answers for two questions, and that should be enough to to get us going. Okay. All right. So we can go back here, and I can go. I'll have this open twice. I can go and I can add to the results page. Well, let me ask you that. What do I need to add? To the results page to show for this poll the list of possible answers. The sequence, um, the sequence um, table. Okay. Okay. What ASP.NET control do I have to add, though? Control or controls? Do you need another data source? I need another data source. Do I need another data source? I think you asked. Do we need another data source? I would say yeah, because it's like a separate. Yeah, because it's logically a separate entity. This is information about the poll. This is going to be the logical, uh, is logically different. It's going to be the list of, of answers. All right. Here we're going to have one thing. We're going to have one chunk of information about the poll. For the possible answers, we're going to have many things. So one to many. So yeah, the one is going to have a data source and the many is going to have a data source. What else do we need? A grid view, right. Um, in general terms, you know, that there's typically going to be, and again, you know, always exceptions, but typically there's going to be a data source and a some user interface object, some visual object that allows us to see uh, the query, are going to be com 
combined. All right? One provides the access to the database, the other is a mechanism to display it. All right, so I'm going to go on here and I'm going to add first my SQL data source. And I'm going to change the name of it to SQL data source answers. What connection to use? Well, I want to use the connection string. What do I want to pull? Well, I'm going to custom write this. So I could say select star from possible answers. Pardon me? Uh, SQL's not case sensitive, so it doesn't matter. Now, is that all I need to do? All right. What else do I need to do? I need to join. No. We don't have to join. All right. Because we're only going to be displaying the possible answers. We're not going to be displaying. The, the question again. We've already displayed the question up above. But what do I need to do here? Where the poll ID, yeah, to I need to limit, I need to filter out to show just the possible answers for this poll. Because if I did this, what I'd get is I'd get all the possible answers. So every question that I looked at, it would show all the possible answers. So I have to go and say where poll ID equals what? Question mark, right. The question mark indicates that the data is going to get filled in at runtime. It's going to come from somewhere. All right. Then in the next screen, we define exactly where it comes from. So I'll say where poll ID equals question mark. Where is that data going to come from? The query string. And what's the field on the query string called? ID. ID. No, you, you, you call it whatever whatever makes sense to you. Yeah, so I mean, I actually deliberately called it just ID to illustrate that it didn't have to match the name of the database column, but if it's clear to you to have it match the database column, by all means, do it. I can test this now, and I can put in a value for one, and there's an error executing the query. <gasps> Shouldn't be. Okay. Your field, your uh, table is possible answer. What the hell was that? Put an S on the Pardon my French there. <laughs> you have an S on the end of your table name in the query. Whoop. I wonder if it was like, yeah, this database has been open read only. This is in this, okay. I'll bet you I open it up in the zip file, uh, like that. And it'll let me do it, but it's only read only. So I didn't, I did not actually make the change, or maybe I did to this. I don't know, I'm confused. Okay, there we go. And sure enough, it's called possible answer. You're right. Okay, so good. Let's, so, so take two. Configure data source. Which connection? That's the connection. What do I want to see? I want to see select star from possible answer where poll ID equals question mark. Notice, by
by the way, that you can use a query designer to do that. Okay. Notice that you can use a query designer to specify columns. Notice I haven't been showing that because I want you to have fun. Pull. Okay. All right. Now, where are we getting the value from the query string? What's it called on the query string? It's called ID. Let me test it. All right, there we go. Yay. Now, one thing I probably should do is I probably want these to appear in a certain sequence, right? So I'm going to say where, um, I'm sorry, not where, order by sequence. Remember, if you don't specify a sequence, the database will give you the data in the order it wants to give it to you. So it might coincidentally be the order that you want. For example, access gives it to you in primary key order, but you can't count on that, especially if you migrate it to another database. The bottom line is if you care about the order, put an order by clause on it. All right. And I could go and do finish. All right. What do I need to do now? Add my grid view, add my visual component. And again, a grid view is better for this because I want to show a list of items. If I only want to show one at a time and let people kind of like click through them, next, 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 I could use a details view, but that doesn't really make sense in this context. Choose the data source, SQL source, and SQL data source answers. And I can go and edit this because I really don't need to see the poll ID, and I really don't need to see the sequence. I just need to see the answer. And I can go in and also edit, get rid of that. All right. Now if I go and run this, Question, Android, iOS, or other? Android, iOS, or other? All right. IE, Chrome, or Firefox? Firefox, IE, Chrome, or other? Questions about this? So, so you have the results page <coughs> excuse me, set up as a, just kind of a generic list of what you have possible as opposed to <coughs> what is it later on that you're going to break apart who chose what? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, remember, uh, uh, I think I mentioned this. We're doing this in steps. I didn't want to jump ahead and do the results. You know, the true results. I want to do it in little increments to just show you a piece at a time. So to answer your question, yeah, th that's actually our next step. We're going to create those other tables and we're going to actually, we're going to actually put some things in there. <coughs> so when you add the data source and then you add the grid view after it, it sort of populates on its own. Well, it populates when it populates when we go in and we ch okay, select data source. Gotcha. Yeah, we have to we have to bind them. We have to marry them up. All right, we have to say that this grid view is getting its values from this data source. Once you do that, then it 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 sure. automatically populates it, and you can go in and change it. Okay. Notice that, like for example, ID and some of those things, I didn't like get rid of them from the data source. I just said I didn't want to display them. Okay, so let's go in and let's add an answer table and let's add a user table. So I'm going to go and add a user table. <coughs> 